Welcome back to Educator.com's AP English Language and Composition course. This lesson is on complex rhetorical modes. Let's get started. All right, we begin as always with a brief lesson overview. We're going to ask what is a rhetorical mode, and then we're going to look at six of the more complex rhetorical modes. We covered the basics in the previous lesson, now we're going to get into the harder stuff. And the six modes we'll cover are process analysis, cause and effect, definition, description, narration, and induction and deduction. Now, to begin with, a quick review, what is a rhetorical mode? Well, rhetorical mode is a common pattern of argument. Basically, it's a ready-made structure of argument for you to use. If you study rhetorical modes, you'll have ready-made approaches to writing your essays on the exam. Also, some of the multiple choice questions on the test will use terminology associated with rhetorical modes, so you need to know what they are so that you can answer those questions. Now, the first of our complex rhetorical modes is what's called process analysis. In this mode, the writer uses a step-by-step -step -step process to explain either how to do something or how something was done. Usually there are examples to spice things up, so it's a step-by-step -step explanation. So if you're explaining how to do a magic trick, step one, first put the rabbit into the hat. This presumably would be the first step in pulling a rabbit out of a hat. Now, a couple things to remember if you're doing process analysis or reading process analysis. First, you will usually want to describe the process in chronological order. Think about recipes. First add the milk, then add the sugar, or whatever order you go in. Use transition words like first, next, finally, and so on to make the stages of the process clear. Use appropriate terminology, okay? Avoid jargon that a reader unfamiliar with your process will not recognize. So if you're writing about how to do a magic trick, don't just say, do a French drop, which is a trade term for a particular type of hand movement. Say, put your hand here, do this, hide the coin this way. Because remember, if someone is reading your process analysis, if they're reading the step-by-step -step instructions, chances are they're not familiar with the jargon of whatever you're writing about. If they were, they wouldn't need the process analysis. And finally, make sure that every step is clear and nothing is left out. If you leave a step out, you will leave your reader hopelessly confused. Now the second complex rhetorical mode is cause and effect. You're probably really familiar with this one. In this mode, the writer explains why things should be done, should be or should have been done, why things work. It's all about making things work. This mode is all about finding underlying causes. So the example we have here is, I was late to school because my cat learned how to work a doorknob and my cat got out and I chased my cat all over the neighborhood and my cat climbed a tree and I climbed the tree to get, after the to get the cat. I fell out of the tree and broke my arm and I had to go to the emergency room and that's why I'm not showing up at school until lunchtime. So cause and effect, why are you showing up at school at lunchtime with your arm in a cast? My cat learned to work a doorknob and... So, things you need to keep in mind if you're going to use cause and effect or analyze cause and effect. First, don't confuse a connection in time or space with a true cause and effect connection, okay? Just because one thing followed another thing doesn't mean the first thing caused the second. Just because two things happen next to each other doesn't mean they're connected. The rooster's crowing does not make the sun come up, okay? You have to make sure there's a true cause and effect relationship. Use carefully chosen examples to turn causal relationships into cause and effect explanations. Examples are what, makes this, what make this mode run. And finally, make sure to address each step in a series of causal relationships. You can't just show up at the school office and someone says, why are you late? And you say, my cat can work a doorknob. Doesn't work, the secretary will be extremely confused and you will not get uh, an excused absence. 